Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, look, I know your time is super valuable, so I really appreciate you coming out and spending some time with me. Listen, uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. We talk with top producing agents, coaches, and authors on this show. Ho, I try to dig out their nuggets, their secrets, so you can take it and implement it in your business. Today's guest, uh, I, you know, I, I reached out to him, and this, look, this guy, his name is Shadi Bazi. He listens to the show. I reached out to him, and he said, hey, man, I listen to your show, and I'm like, oh, how is that? You are a giant trainer. This guy has been the machine, the muscle behind organizations like Tom Ferry's, like Mike Ferry's. You know, even for Tom, at one point, he had 140 coaching clients at one time. I do not know how he did it, man. I really don't. Uh, so look, I bring him on. We talk about what to look for in a coach, what makes a good coach. We talk about the regular, the typical pitfalls that people fall into when they're trying to build their business. So um, I got to warn you, the audio is a little bit on my side. I was peaking. I was peaking and I didn't notice it till the middle. So uh, I don't know. You might hear it. You might not. Um, so <clears throat> if you do hear it, I apologize. I'm going to clean up that audio in the future. I'll make sure it never happens. But first, a word from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm. But how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. And a little housekeeping there before we get to the, to the actual content. If you don't know, the hashtag for this show is, for the, not this episode, the whole show is... is Hashtag unpack that idea. That is a big follow train. Uh, Tweet out. Use that hashtag. I'll follow you. I encourage everybody in the audience to follow one another. You know, we're building a really, really strong little community here on Twitter. Uh, One other thing, event. Uh, Today, this episode will air June 6, 2014. We are going to have a live event June 19 uh, here in San Diego. We're just going to have, I'm going to have 10 people. We're all going to pitch in. We're going to rent a suite at a a hotel, you know, cater some food. And uh, and we're going to mastermind all day. We're going to talk about your business. We're going to talk about where you're stuck. Let's get you unstuck and on the fast road, the fast track. Speaking of the fast track, I have an ebook. By the way, some of you listen, don't go to the website. I suggest go to the website. Um, I write show notes. So, you know, you can get a little quick dose of what is in the episode and then and then dig in and listen to it. Um uh, super eight, go to superagentslive.com. Now, when you get there, you're going to see a free ebook that I give away. <laughs> you have to give me your email address, right? That's the cost of it. It's free. Just give me your email address. And, uh, but I, I look, it's a, a, a book. Uh, it's a pamphlet. It's like eight to 13 pages. I wrote it. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, um, uh, the reason why I'm saying now today to go get that is because I am retiring that I wrote a new one. It's a 32 page book. That is great. It is so great. I think I, I contemplated actually just selling it on Amazon. That's how good it is. Uh, so, so download the one, the current one, and then I'll let you know when the new one comes out. Okay. 
Uh, really quickly, guests. I'm always looking for new guests. Always looking for great guests to deliver to you. If you're out there, you think you have a message that uh, that is good for the show, let me know. Send me an email. Uh, if you know somebody that uh, you would like to have on the show, give me their name. I'll reach out to them. You know, maybe it's somebody in your marketplace that you would like to model. You'd like to little, you know, get some little inside intel on how they're doing it. Let me know who they are, uh, big or small, you know, young or old. Okay, let's get to the show. Chadi Bazi. Hey, Chadi, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, look, uh, I, I've given the audience a brief overview of your background, but, you know, maybe take a minute and tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you got going on today. I know you got a, a ton of stuff happening. That's right. Thank you very much, uh, Toby. I, I want to begin before I speak about myself. I just want to say, uh, number one, thank you for giving me the opportunity. And number two, thank you for doing what you do. Your show, your voice, your message is a huge contribution to the real estate industry. And uh, what, a, what an inspiration it is, you know, not only for I, but for, you know, thousands of the people that follow you online. So thank, thank you, you very much for that. Well, that makes me feel good. Thank you. Well, you're, do, you're doing a good thing. You should. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, Toby, I, I personally sold real estate in two different marketplaces. Uh, I started selling real estate in uh, Detroit, Michigan, uh, you know, Dearborn to be specific, which is the suburb of uh, Detroit. And, uh, you know, did that and did, did very good in that marketplace. And, you know, what I wanted at that time was to earn six figures. And my average commission check was about $800. So as you can imagine how difficult it was for me to earn six figures. So I was like, where can I go sell real estate where I can make a lot of money, you know, on each uh, commission check? So I was like, okay, Newport Beach, California, it is. Now, I've never, ever been to California in my life. I sold my home, moved my family to Newport Beach, and at that time I started to work uh, for a gentleman by the name of Mike Ferry. So I put real estate on hold and, you know, treated uh, the Mike Ferry uh, system as uh, my, my college, let's say, and uh, instantly became, you know, one of their top sales reps over there, got trained, I mean, the best training in the world. Uh, from there, you know, did that for about four years or so. Then I went into real estate in Orange County. So I, started, I left Mike. I went, I went out to sell real estate. Did very good, very quickly, Toby. In my first 30 days, I put approximately $100,000 worth of transactions together, of which 100% of them was listings. None of them were buyers. So did very good in, in the Orange County marketplace, uh, primarily as a listing agent. I only worked one buyer, and that buyer was myself when I bought a home. Uh, obviously, I built uh, you know a little small team with a buyer's agent to work my buyers, et cetera. And then, uh, then you know, from there, about a year into it, uh, I uh, was it was approached by Tom Ferry uh, to be a coach for his company. So uh, I love coaching. I love uh, contributing. I love helping. So I was like, all right, I want to do this. So I instantly became the number one coach for his company. And pretty much never had less than 100 one-on-one -on -one coaching clients at any given time because my schedule was always in demand. Amazing, uh, man. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, well, later I want to dig into even how that works, but that is crazy. I mean, I have four. I only take four at a time, and I do them all on Thursdays. I'll, I, for me, and, and my call's about an hour. I don't know how long you – but, dude, I am wiped out. So I don't know how you did that. But sorry, man. I, I, I had to go. Keep going. So you, 100, yeah, 100 I mean people. Yeah, 100 people at any given time. I mean, I got to the point where I had like 140 one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and, you know, my, the schedule was always in demand. There was always a waiting list, et cetera. And I think the reason for that, Toby, is because, you know, when you're delivering results and you're really care and you're passionate, you know, you don't even take a look at, you know, the 30-minute call or anything like that. You know, it, it just went by very quickly for me, and it's something I look forward to doing all day. Uh, yeah, I was on the phone all day, every single day, but, you know, being on the phone and people saying, hey, you told me to do this, I did it, and I got that kind of result, come on, man. That right there is like getting a ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 check. So I just loved it. Well, so look, number one, so tell me this. So you have this huge background in, in with coaching. You, you're good at it. You love it. Um, and I want to, you know, this call, I, I, I at least in the beginning here, I want to I wanna un, I unpack that a little bit. So, so first you had a hundred clients at any given time with Tom, 
Can you give me yeah. the general profile? What did those people look like? Were they were they new agents? Were they you know like like who goes to who? What do they look like? Uh, you, you know, there were, you know, I had a common, the majority of the people that I worked with were people that were, you know, doing like less than 20 transactions in a month. And those were the people that wanted to add like one extra deal a month to their production, uh, two deals a month extra to their production. Uh, that was the majority of my clientele. But I also worked with people that were doing, you know, upwards of 50 to 100 transactions, uh, et cetera. So, you know, all over the place, but the majority of them were people doing, you know, 10, 15 deals a year and just want to take it to the next level. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you said 20 transactions a month. You meant 20 transactions no, a, a, year. a year. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that's guys, that, those <laughs> guys are kind of, okay. So that's generally, it's the you know, people that are doing, uh, uh, so two a month or so. Okay. That's interesting. Now, uh, in terms of an age profile, what w were they, what did that look like? I think the majority of the people uh, of that audience were people in their 40s. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, mostly people in their 40s. And and so you had these 40 year olds, you know, that are that are, you know, they're doing, you know, look, there's, I I don't know what would you, what would you say somebody who does 20 transactions a month. Is that somebody that is struggling? A year. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. A year. Yeah, thanks. Is that <laughs> is that somebody that is struggling, or would you call that successful, or what what would you call that? Okay. In the real estate world, if you're doing 20 transactions a year, you are successful. Okay. Uh, the, the audience that we attract. Uh, I mean, I have people I'm working with right now that are doing you know 100 plus transactions a year. So that is like outrageously uh, you know successful uh, in a top producer world. But in the real estate world, in, in general terms, you know, you do, you know, two deals a month, you're a top producer. That's amazing. You know, right. So, the, so there, you know, there was a, a stat that came out by NAR and they said that only 2%, 2% of agents make more than $200,000 a year, which I thought was amazing because, yeah. you know, everybody on my show, you know, that's, that's peanuts to the people that I had, you know. Exactly. People. So what, exactly. what, I mean, look, after, you know, I mean, you have talked to a million people who are struggling and, and look, the, the, the two people a year, you know, folks are successful in your mind or two people, two transactions a month. What is the one thing, Shadi, that you see over and over again that, you know, what is the one trap or the one, the one thing that just everybody you see is a common thing that people struggle with? Ah. Uh... Uh, Toby, I, I think the most common thing is that uh, a lot of people that get involved in real estate come from, you, you know, that they're not entrepreneurs. Right. And, and that's exactly why I love your show is because you take people through the entrepreneurial journey. They're not entrepreneurs. They don't have the discipline. Uh, they don't have the right mindset. Uh, and, and many of them, like 90 plus percent of them, don't have a sales background. Right. And, you know, real, real estate, I mean, you, people just say real estate, but it's real estate sales professional. That's what you are. And the key word is the word sales, and you got to know how to sell. So a lot of people, you know, just flat out, you know, need help with how to convert people, how to speak with people. They think that just because you're a people person, you're going to do a transaction. Well, I know a lot of, you know, people, people that ain't doing that many transactions because they don't know how to sell. So I, I, I think learning the art of influence and really understanding the sales process is the most important thing. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Someone gets involved in this business, okay? And they set an appointment to go on a listing presentation. Well, when it's time to do a listing presentation, they don't know how to do a listing presentation. They just learned how to fill out the contract. They don't know how to do a listing presentation. So they go there, and if they do end up taking the, the listing, they take it at the wrong price because they did not know how to do a listing presentation. You think a listing at the wrong price, it's not going to sell. So, you know, that's wasted time, wasted efforts, wasted money, wasted everything. So, you know, uh, for the majority of my clients, one of the key areas that we focus on is the art of influence. How to get people to like you, trust you, and want to do business with you. You, if you're able to do that, the rest is a piece of cake. Right, right. So there are people, people, people. <laughs> which is yeah. there are people who are who love people whatever people people and actually i have a i'm coaching one girl that's a little bit like that she's very very you know she loves to talk with people she's very easy to talk to but she'll go door knocking and she'll spend 20 minutes with somebody who they they, they told her 
15 minutes ago, they're, they're not thinking about selling, but she'll spend 20 minutes just, just talking with that person. Well, that's great, yeah. but, but you know, like that's eating into your day. So I can understand how, you know, those kinds of people, if they, if they don't, you know, if they're not deliberate about their actions, we're are not going to get anywhere. Now, exactly. Let me say something about that. This is what we call creative avoidance in the real estate industry. Okay. So basically, you know, that, that person had a person to talk to them and, you know, they're, they're probably fearful around doing the actual activity or they probably don't have the skill set to do the proper activity. Therefore, they use that as an avoidance of doing the actual activity. That's my opinion. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I, and that's interesting that you say it. I, I, that's one thing. And the other side of it is, is, you know, they feel like, oh, man, well, if I if I just say, hey, I got to go, you know, they're, they're going to come off rude. You know, and, you know, and, and for this person, I said, hey, listen, you know, you're on a mission, right? You, you, you're, you have, again, you have to be deliberate. You're out there trying to get deals. So it's okay to say, hey, great t- chatting with you, but my time is limited here. Maybe I can talk with you next week. <clears throat> exactly. So, so Shadi, so you, you focus, uh, you tell your people how to influence. Um, can you yeah. un- unpack that a little bit? Because, you know, <clears throat> that's a big topic, you know, in terms of the, the ability to influence people. All right, so I'm, I'm going to give you I'm, I'm going to give you something that's very valuable. So whoever is listening to this, grab a pen, paper, and take some notes. All okay, right. so I'm going to walk you through what we call the sales process. Okay, there's six steps uh, that you got to learn. Okay, okay. And and I'm going to begin this way by by saying handling objections. I mean, is it important to learn how to handle objections, Colby? Absolutely, right? Because you're going to get objections all the time. Yep. And it's the one thing that stops people from taking action is because, you know, the, the thought in their mind is, what if I'm asked a question that I, cannot, that I cannot answer? Yeah. What if I get an objection that I cannot handle? It's the end of it. And see, this is the biggest mistake in the real estate industry. A lot of people spend the majority of their time trying to master the ability to handle objections. See, if we, are, if we were to break down all six elements in the sales process by percentage-wise, in my opinion, okay, and it's a very strong opinion, have, handling objections is only 5% of the whole entire process. So step number six, and I'm going to go backwards, step number six in the sales process is to learn how to handle objections. And here's why I say that, Toby. Because more important than learning how to handle objections is learning how to eliminate objections before they even come up. When was the last time you heard somebody talking about, here's how you eliminate the objection before it comes up? Barely ever. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, so that's step number six in the sales process. Step number five in the sales process is closing. Toby, when you hear the letters, the acronyms, ABC, what does that stand for? Always be closing. Exactly. And I think that is one of the worst things that we taught salespeople in the sales industry. And you're probably like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> See, for, for me, ABC does not stand for always be cold. ABC stands for always be contributing. Always be contributing. Always be making a difference. Always keep what's in the best interest of the client on the front end. Now, in my opinion, is if you have to close somebody, it simply means that you are trying to compensate for your lack of ability to do a listing presentation. Because <laughs> if you do a proper listing presentation and you give the seller and or buyer exactly what they want, why do you need to close? You don't. So step number five is closing. Step number four is presenting. Step number four is presenting. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they are given a listing presentation word for word, and they're told, memorize this, go there, and do it like this, and you will get a listing. Well, every once in a while, that's going to work because your listing presentation is going to fit the personality uh, or, or, or the motivation or uh, the criteria that that person is looking for. But what happens is if, the, if, if that listing presentation does not fit the personality and or the criteria or the motivation of that specific seller, then that listing presentation is not going to work, is it? No. It's not. Okay. Yep. No. Okay. So every single listing presentation has got to be done differently. So this is why I teach my clients the structures, and I teach them how to put the structures in place in the right order for the right person, and that's why my client takes a listing for uh, every eight to nine listing appointments that go on 87% of the time, they take the listing. So step number four, uh, Toby, in, in making this very quick, is the listing presentation. Step number three is qualifying. Qualifying. Okay. So now, 
Step number three is very, 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 very critically important. Actually, it's more important than the listing presentation because in your qualifying, you're identifying the following, the wants of the seller, the needs of the seller, the problems the seller is trying to solve, you know, their, uh, the, the, the ability, the, you know, the finances. Uh, you're identifying the authority. Are there any other people involved in the decision-making process, et cetera? These are all very important elements. Now, that right there is what the average person will study, okay? We take it a step further. Toby, you have a process that you go through in your mind to make decisions, right? Yep. Okay, my process may be 100% different. Every single person processes information differently. Some people like to process information by pictures. Some people like to process information by the words they hear. Some people process information by the way they feel about something. So I teach my clients how to qualify for that. Because if somebody is a picture person, we're going to show them pictures. If someone is an emotional person, we're going to create emotion. If someone is an auditory person, then we are going to say all the right words to get that person to make a decision. You know, some people are internal versus external. Some people make a decision primarily based on how they feel. Some people make a decision primarily on how other people may take a look at their decision. Okay, so you got to know which one of those criteria fits the seller that you're dealing with so you know how to steer the conversation correctly. And, you know, we can even take it a step further by saying some people make a decision to move away from pain. Some people make a decision to move towards a pleasurable experience. If someone is moving, if someone is selling their home and or buying a home to gain a pleasurable experience for themselves and their family and their future, and you're talking about pain, they're not, you're not going to connect. And it's going to be the end of your presentation because, you know, you're talking apples and they're, you know, thinking oranges. Follow me? Yep, I'm following you. It's complicated, right. so but, that, I, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to you know, break this down afterwards, but go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 here's the thing. When, when you say complicated, uh, you know, for someone that's hearing this for the first time, yes, it's complicated, okay? But, you know, how long does it take for someone to really master what I'm talking about right now? About three, four hours. And I say do the hard work once. Is it hard to learn? Let's say it is. Okay, I don't think it is, but let's say it is. So do the hard work once, learn it, and then it becomes easy. Look, at one time in your life, walking was hard, but you didn't give up, did you? <laughs> no, sorry, but but um, look, I, I you have, I mean, okay, so proper listing, right? Handle if I work up handling objections. So I get to the qualifying piece. Now, you're you're talking about being able to to uh, spend you know twenty minutes with somebody, or whatever, and be able to to not only see these cues. Right, whether they are auditory or visual or whatever, and then to not only see and recognize those cues, but to then um, be so fast on their toes that they can they can look. This show is very very dynamic. There's lots of other people who who w- would have you on, Shadi, and they would just ask questions. Now I'm good at being yeah. on my feet, right? I'm good at twisting, turning when you are, but. But man, I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know that everybody can do that. That's why I think, that's why I said, you know, it's. Toby, you bring up a very good point. Here's what I want to say. I've listened to every single one of your episodes since you started, okay? Except for the last three, which I need to catch up on. <laughs> Thank you. And man. all I got to say is, is when you began, okay, you began somewhat scripted. Okay? Yes. And you commented about that in, in your show. You said, look, you know, you know I'm, I, I need to be me, I need to be this. Need to, but see, you have to go through a process to eliminate the script. Yes. You have to get comfortable in your own skin. So you have to do the hard work once, which is what we call imperfect action. You took imperfect action, and then sooner than later, you became very comfortable. Now you're saying, you know, you're just going with the flow. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. You don't, you don't need a script anymore, do you? No. Because you, 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 you already have the foundation. The script is just the foundation. Yep. So look. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. And even if it is difficult, then it's going to make you an extra ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. Don't you owe it to yourself and your family to learn it? Yeah. Yep. Bingo. Okay. All right. So let's move on to step yep. number two. Okay. Okay. Step number two is even more important than the first four steps we went over. Okay. And that is building rapport. Yes. Building rapport. Getting people to like you, trust you, feel connected with you. Because if you're not going to establish that level of rapport and you ask your questions to qualify somebody, do you think they're going to answer your questions, Toby? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. So step number two is building rapport. And step number one is assuming the sale. 
assuming the sell, developing the mindset of a champion salesperson. You know, you gotta believe in your mind that this person is gonna sign the contract with you. You gotta believe in your mind that that person is gonna set the appointment with you. You gotta believe that there is no objection. It's simple to do. You just assume the outcome that you are wanting. But do you think that's good enough? It's not. We take that a step further by saying you've got to learn to use a comfort language pattern. Right. See, what you, what you are thinking and what is going out of your mouth have to be in perfect alignment. And if they're not, it's incongruent and it's going to create the wrong outcome. Can I give you an example? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we tell uh, people that, you know, you've got to believe, you've got to assume that someone's going to set an appointment with you, right? Yep. And then they are talking to the seller and or the buyer and they say something along the line of, should you meet with me? Right. You see the incongruency? Yes. That's incongruent. So step number one is assuming the sale, you know, taking on the right mindset. Step number two is building rapport. Step number three is qualifying. Number four, mastering your presentation. Step number five is closing. And step number six is handling objections. Let's spend one more minute on this, Toby, and yes. then we'll move on. Oh, yeah. Okay? Well, I don't okay. know where we're going to move. I mean, I want to stay in, on this a little bit because um, – but go, go. Make your point, and then I, I want to bring something up. Yeah. Okay, so – I assume the sale, I speak very powerfully, okay? I get you on the phone, I establish a good level of rapport, and or in person, I establish a good level of rapport with you. I ask you a bunch of questions, and in the questions, you tell me exactly what you're looking for, exactly what you want, and then I do my presentation showing you that I'm exactly what you're looking for, and I got exactly what you want. Do I need to close? No, no, it happened, that will happen if you can do all that, Especially, you know, so if you use that assumptive language while you why while you are building rapport, the the mm-hmm. the signing of the contract is going to be completely organic. It's going to feel natural exactly. to both people. Exactly, and that's exactly why I say step number five or five and six are the least important. Yeah, yeah, you know, that that uh, and that, that's so funny. Now that I'm looking at that. I think everybody should go back and write this. I just wrote this down, and now that now that I've written it down, it, it actually uh, it makes sense it, it, this way. So using that assumptive language, I think that those two things go together, right? Number one and number two, rapport and and using that assumptive language. But again, in terms of you know this you know NLP neuro linguistic processing or what, you know how hard is that for somebody to learn? Um, it depends on their commitment level, uh, Toby. I mean, if someone's coming, look. I have a, I have an NLP program that I take people through, and I've taken, I don't know, about 150 people through the program in 2014, in 2013, that is, okay? And how hard is it for these people? It's not that hard at all because it, it depends where you're getting the information from. And the way that I broke down the information is step by step, step by step, okay? And basically, it's all fill in the blanks. It's very, very, very simple. In my opinion, it's very simple. Well, yeah, because you're again, you're an expert at it. So, so here, let, let me ask you this way, because but I was not an expert at it a long time ago. I sat down, I learned it step by step. Uh, look, I'd say within 30 days, these language patterns become a natural part of who you are, and you begin to use them without even having to think about it. Got it. Okay, and it's just that you need to be exposed to it. You need to practice it. I mean, it takes practice. Uh, again, I'm not going to use the word easy. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, with practice, it becomes very simple. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Well, and, and look, and how you started that, Shadi, you said it, that, that when I said how hard is that, you said it depends on your level of commitment. And, and if I go way back to the beginning when we first started, um, I forget exactly what you said, but you, you said people, uh, in terms of your coaching program, you bring somebody in, you sort of explain what to do, and uh, and then once they know how to do it, they go do it, and then all of a sudden that's worth another extra 15 or 20 grand to them. And, and you know, through this, you know, when you talk about commitment and you talk about imperfect action, it all comes down to action. Now, that for yeah. me, for me, <clears throat> what I see with 
with entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs or whatever, that is the piece that they struggle with, right? They, yeah. you know, they may know what to do, Shadi, but <clears throat> getting them to go out and do it, how do you, I mean, it sounds like you've been very successful with getting people to take action. Yeah, because there, there, there's one piece that we did not talk about. Uh, you look, know, as an entrepreneur, people that sell product and or services, you know, we're taught a long time ago that sell people what they want and then give them what they need. Okay, so we're talking about what they want. Everybody wants to learn how to master selling, et cetera. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, are not going to take action on that because they don't have the proper mindset. You know, in every single one of my programs, every single one of my programs begins by me working with you on your mind. Because there's a big difference between knowing and believing. And I got to get you to the point where you believe in what you're doing. You believe in yourself to the point where you're not going to let anyone off the hook. Never, ever, ever, ever again. See, a lot of people know exactly what to do, but they're not going to do it. The reason being is they either believe that it's not going to work for them or they simply do not believe in themselves. Okay? So how do you, be, how do you develop that belief system is the real question, right, Toby? Yeah, yeah. This is what we say is the million-dollar question, right? Let's hear it. Do you want the, do you want the answer? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a million-dollar question, Toby, so you got to give me a million dollars. <laughs> All right, all joking aside, here's the way we do it, okay? I think people took a process into the future, okay? I think I'm into the future. We do a goal-setting workshop where I, and a lot of people don't know how to do that because they don't know what to look for. Everyone just writes down, I want a car, I want a home, I want a vacation. It's very common. But right. you've known that all along. It's not good enough. you got to dig deeper. So I take them through the process into the future, and I say three to five years into the future. If life was as good as it could possibly be, if business was as good as it possibly be, okay, and I wanted you to write me a letter, okay, take yourself five years into the future, write me a letter, tell me about all the amazing things that you're experiencing in your life right now as if they had already occurred. And people sit down and write it. Toby, you know, it's December 31st, 2017. And I just wanted to write you a quick letter and tell you about all the amazing things that have taken place in my life over the course of the last five years. You know, I got involved in this business and I kind of struggled, but I kind of figured it out. And I am the top agent in my marketplace right now. You know, the best part about being a top agent is not being a top agent. It's about being able to help a minimum of 100 people every single year buy and or sell a home, live the American dream. And through doing that, I built a life of abundance. You know, I love to travel. This year alone, we took three two-week vacations. We spent two weeks in Hawaii, two weeks in Costa Rica, and two weeks in Europe. You know, and I'm a man of contribution. I love to help out. You know, I volunteer one day a week at the homeless shelter. I do A, I do B, I do C, I drive this car. I am in the best shape of my life, et cetera. So do you see how I'm talking? And look, I'm getting pumped up just talking about this, Toby. Yeah. It, it's crazy. So they write it all down, and it looks perfect on paper, okay? And then what I ask my clients to do is to read that every single morning and every single night. Within 30 days, Toby, magic happens. That magic is when it's time to go to bed each and every single night, these people cannot go to sleep because they are so excited about waking up to pursue making that dream become a reality. Eventually, sooner than later, they begin to buy into it. They begin to see themselves as that person. All of a sudden, their decisions are different, their actions are different, and their results are different. Look, I got a guy I work with. His name is Lewis, okay? And, and if you ask Lewis, what is the key to his success, he'll tell you it's this exercise right here. When I met Lewis in 2013, in 2012, all of 2012, he earned about $100,000. Toby, last month, not while well, we're in June right now, I say in April, I know for a fact that April he earned $80,000 in June. We're projecting for him to earn over $100,000 in one month. Wow. And you ask him, you ask him, what is it? He'll tell you, I believe in myself. How did you gain that such believability in yourself? He'll tell you it's this exercise, Toby. So it's something that everyone should definitely do. That's amazing. So, so a, a guy like Tom, right? Tom, for example, he'll start off his day. He has a different routine, but he starts. He, um, I, I believe it's him, but you know, he writes down what he's grateful for. So you are yeah. what you ask your clients to do is to envision out five years. Why five years? I mean, if I did this with my clients, I don't. You know, five years. That's just a long it's time. Too far out. Yeah. Exactly. 
Sorry, so one other piece of the, so we begin with five years, and then we take it a step further, Toby. What we do now is we do a letter like that every single month. Mm. So look, it's June 31st of 2014. Toby, we just wanted to write you a quick letter and tell you about all the amazing things I've done in the month of June. You know, I launched a podcast. We have thousands of downloads. You know, I had I, I got a goal to set, to earn fifty thousand dollars. I ended up with sixty. I helped that many families that did this, 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 lost that much weight, went on this vacation, bought this, bought that. So we now do it on a monthly basis. And I love what Tom does every single morning about the grateful list. But we've taken that a step further. Can I tell you what my clients do? Because that's yeah. part of the morning routine. That's part of the, you know the morning ritual. Because it doesn't just stop at reading your vision. Okay. Okay. Here's here's what we do. Every single morning, we begin by writing down three things that made us happy in the last 24 hours. See, most people wake up every single morning and they're consumed with the thoughts of all the hard things they got to do. So we, we got to erase that and replace that with happiness. So we write down three things that made us happy in the last 24 hours. All of a sudden, your mind is shifted to happiness. The second thing that we do is we write down three things that we are grateful for. And there's a reason why we only do three things. Because the way that we used to do it a long time ago is we used to write 10 things that we're grateful for every single morning. So every single morning we write down 10, but then two, three days later, it becomes very repetitive and it loses its power. Right. So every single day, three different things that you are grateful for. Then we take that a step further and we write down three, our top three goals, top three goals, wherever they may be. And then we write down our income goal in the present tense 25 times. That's how we do it every single morning. It takes five minutes, hurts your hands for a little bit, but boy, it does wonders to the mind, and you begin to believe in yourself. You know, it, it's it's sort of a different version of just like a you know the assumptive uh, um, assuming the sale, right? You're it's that's it's well, c- kind of the same thing, right? But but uh, it, used in a different way. Yeah. So what about, you know, in terms of like, like this is in a lot of ways, right? So what you hear a lot of times is, you know, find your why, right? Why are you doing what you're doing? Find your why. And that is a finding your why is, is difficult for a lot of people. Why? How is this different? Or, or do you, in terms of finding your why and driving toward it or doing this assumptive of what my life's going to look like one year, one, you know, next month, how are those different? And what, what do you think is more powerful? Uh, I, I think it's all the same, just a different concept of it. Okay. Okay, because, you, you know, your goals are your why. The things that you're grateful for determine who you are. Okay, your goal that you write down every single day is, is your why. See, the thing is, you know, people say it's hard to discover their why. See, people know their why, but they don't think about their why. They don't remind themselves of their why, uh, you know, long enough or often enough. And that's why we do this exercise. See, it's, it's nothing more than going through a series of questions. What do I want? What do I want? Toby, but that's all they say is what do I want? You got to take it a step further. What do I want for me personally? What do I want for my mind? What do I want for me physically? How do I want to contribute to this world? Okay. You know, for, for, for my family, for my business, for my finances, you know, you got to dig that deep. And that's why I say, you know, always, you know, come up, you know, to, to keep it simple, come up with three top goals for you physically. Three top goals for you mentally. Three top goals for you spiritually. Three top goals for your family. Three top goals for your finances. Three top goals for your business. All of a sudden, you have 18 goals. Yeah. How many people do you know that have 18 goals? <laughs> and, and, the, and, and the people that do, they, they, go through the, they go through this exercise, but they never go back to it. You got to remind yourself every single day. Dang it, man. See, you're, you're, you're dealing in a transaction, and the transaction is going south, and it's about to fall apart. Guess what? You forget about your goal, don't you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. When you forget about your goals, you forget about your why. When you forget about your why, you become desperate, and you're no longer adopting the mentality of abundance. You have the mentality of lack. All of a sudden, all your actions are, are congruent with that without you even knowing it, and it just becomes a vicious circle. That's it. Got it. Okay, so look, so, so you have this, this very unique uh, <clears throat> viewpoint, this very unique style of coaching. How did you get that, Shadi? Is this, is this, um, you know, so you were a coach, then you sold real estate, and then, you know, you went back to coaching, and now with Tom Ferry, and then now you've, you've launched ShadiBazzi.com, and, yeah. uh, you know, you're building your own brand. Um, yeah. Did, like, did you, is this stuff that you just learned along the way, or is this, like, what? Toby. Uh, yeah, talk if, to me. If, I'll, I'll make it very simple. Okay, two things. Two things that everybody needs to do every single day, but two things that most people never, ever do enough, okay?
okay, number one, anything and everything you want to learn is inside of a book. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You know, I read a book a week. I read a book a week. I, you know, I, and I get my clients to read a minimum of one book a month. That's it. You read 10, 15 minutes every single morning. That's all you need to do. So that's step number one. Step number two, feed your mind with something positive, you know, positive audio. You know, people listen to your podcast every single day. Come on, man, dad alone and itself is going to inspire the heck out of them. That's yeah. it. Yeah, Read yeah. and listen to something positive and then surround yourself with the right people. That's it. That is it, man. I mean, when, when you read a book or, you know, you, you know, people listen to my show and they, you know, they can tap into this knowledge from you, you know, it's your people are able to, to really stand on the shoulders of giants. Right. And, and, and really propel themselves into a place where, you know, they can shorten their learning cycle like crazy. Yeah. So, so exactly. what is, so, so, you know, you, when you, when a, when somebody comes to you to work with you, Shadi, one of the, you, the, you first work on their mind, which I, which I, you know, yeah. I, I love that. And I, I need to, <clears throat> I need to get better at that on my part because, you know, I walk through, I say, Hey, what do you want to achieve? Okay. Now we know what you want to achieve at the end of the year. You know, how, why do you want to achieve that? And how will that make you feel? I need to be better at doing that. And I personally, b- b- Shadi, I personally need to be better at writing down my goals and reviewing them every day. But, and, and, and it, that's kind of leading to this question, but, and this is kind of, this goes back to my early questions in my script, but I, I really want to know from you, but what is that, that single thing that most realtors get wrong when they come into this business? You know, they, you, they don't have a sales background. Right. They need to learn that they probably don't have the right mindset. But, you know, what is the thing that that you, you just see people just get tripped up on? Uh, I think that they spend uh, too much time okay, trying to learn the paperwork and not enough time trying to learn how to get the client. Got because it. Learning the paperwork without learning how to get the client is, is no good at all. Yeah. You know what? And, and, and a lot of people come into this business, you know, thinking that. You know, you can just do an open house and people are going to walk into your, 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 your open house and you're going to get a deal or the company's going to give you deals, et cetera, or the name of the company or the company matters. None of that matters. You matter. Right. Right. You know, it's funny. I got an email the other day and this guy, um, I think his name was Michael, he sends me this long, long email and it's, it's got, it's a great email. Hey, Michael, thanks for sending me that email. But, but he relayed this to me, Shadi. He's like, Hey, I just learned about, um, variable commissions and uh and i don't know why that wasn't in the in the the training that i got and and i you know i'm digging into this this stuff because i feel like if i went to a listing presentation and and a client asked me about variable commissions and i didn't know i'd get laughed out of that listing presentation i'm like man you know those are outlier situations number one and number two if you've done your job of building great rapport with those people that kind of crap doesn't matter and if you qualified on Kobe, you would know if that's going to come up or not. Right. Right. It goes, back, it, it goes back to my earlier point. Most people are too concerned about what objection is going to come up. That should be the least of your worries. How do – right. You're right. Exactly right. I forgot. I should have I looked back at your list. How do people – I know Mike Ferry has this way of qualifying, trying to qualify people and trying to identify – well, well, and maybe it's not quali- – Mike try, has a system of, of trying to identify objections – Right, which is, I guess is, is a different form of, of qualification in a lot of ways. Before you get in front of people, now for you and your very dynamic way of qualifying people, is there a way to get some early intel, or is it is it you know just step up to the plate and 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 be dynamic and build rapport, and let that let that signature on that contract happen organically? Exactly, that's the way. Well, you know, I mean, you, the qualifying is is a very important part, and you got to qualify. By the way, let me just say, I love. Mike, love Mike. He's great if it wasn't guy. for Mike, I, I wouldn't be who I am. Uh, love, love him, his family, Tom. Love him to death. Uh, great, great companies. Uh, they mean well. They teach well, and they're, they're leaders in our industry. And um, you know, back to the qualifying thing. Uh, you have to qualify. Uh, look, when I first started, I used to use the Mike Ferry scripts verbatim, word for word. Okay. And does it work? Absolutely works. So yes, you got to qualify people. You got to identify the objections. It's just a different way of doing it. There's more than one way to do it, but here's the key. The key, and I want everyone to write this down, Toby, and you want to write it down. I'm right. Okay. And I think you're doing a very good job uh, at this because you, you know, we're conducting a great interview. Listening is the foundation to all influence. Listening is the foundation to all influence. 
See, most people are too concerned about what to say, how to say it, etc. They forget to listen. You've got to become a very good listener. When you are listening, you pick up on the cues. You pick up on exactly what they want and how they want it, and then that's how it becomes organic. Right. How you identify if someone is any of the things that I talked about, pain, you know, pain, pleasure, auditory, visual, kinesthetic. How do you identify that? You listen. Yeah. That's it. You listen. And you look, and there's, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if somebody's saying something and, you know, first of all, people are scared at a listening presentation or whatever, people are scared of silence, right? Yeah. And so, so they're listening. They're like, crap, I, I got to say, I got to figure out what to say next. <clears throat> you know, and there's, and there's no problems with, with saying, hold on a second, like explain that to me. I'm not sure that I understand that. I do that all the time on the show. I'm like, wait, you know, hold on. I, I don't, I'm not following you here. Yeah. So yeah. Li- listening it, is the foundation. Yep, listening is the foundation. And when, you, when you're not clear, or here, here's another reason why I say listening is the foundation. See, there's a lot of people that ask a question, Toby, and they get an answer. But the answer has nothing to do with the question. And then they move on to the next question. Right. And that's because they are not good listeners. They're not listening. Interesting. So people will ask a question. They don't get the um... – is it that they're not listening or is it that, that maybe they didn't quite understand uh, understand the answer and they just... The bottom line, sorry to interrupt you. The bottom line is they're not comfortable with selling. They don't understand the process. They don't understand communication. And that's exactly why they skip it. They move forward. They don't listen. And, and, and then they fumble and then they don't get the listing. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 would, I, would, want, I would agree with that. So, Shadi, in terms of coaching, I mean, again, you obviously are a, a super successful coach. I mean, you you are very sought after in the world. Um, what makes a good coach? I, you know, I, and one of the reasons why I initially brought Mike on, right? Brought, I, I brought Mike on, asked him that question. Uh, then I brought Bob Corcoran on. I brought, and now I'm having you on. And I'm also having, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm having Tim Harris on, if you know Tim. Uh, Tim's coming yeah. on the show. I want to know what makes a good coach? Is there like, if somebody wants to get coaching, how do they identify that shoddy is going to be better for me than, than Jimmy or Joe? Okay. Um, I, I think the most important, well, it depends on who you are. Yeah, that's exactly where it goes. It depends on who you are working with. Number one, you want to make sure you're working with someone who's already done everything you're trying to do. Okay. Someone who's, who's been out on the field and done everything that you're trying to do. So that, that would be number one. Number two, you want to make sure that your coach is available to you. Okay, let me give you an example. There's a lot of people that get a coaching call every other week or maybe every single week. So let's say you and I are coaching, Toby. You need, you know, you're my client, okay? So I tell you, it's Monday morning. I tell you, I want you to do A, B, and C this week. So you go out there and do A, B, and C, and then you get stuck on Tuesday. Well, our next coaching call is not till next Monday. If you have no availability to your coach in between, guess what? What he told you to do only work to a certain degree. It's not going to work. Yeah. See, your coach has to, you know, I, I got this thing that, you know, I, I got right here on my computer screen. It says, okay, I love my coaching clients way too much to leave them the way that they are. I love my coaching clients too much to leave them the way that they are. I see them bigger than they are. I see them much more powerful than they see themselves. I believe in them a lot more than they believe in themselves. Look, I had one of my coaching clients send me a text message Saturday morning saying, can I get a minute of your time? I didn't even respond to the text message. You know what I did? Called him. I picked up the phone and called him and gave him five minutes of my time. Right. We worked through something, okay, that he, he was dealing with a challenge. See, if, if your coach is not going to be available for you outside the coaching call, it's going to be very tough. And that's exactly one of the reasons why I gave up wanting to work with 100 plus people at a time because I, didn't, I couldn't give them that much more time. Now I work with a maximum of 15 to 20 people and they have the any time that they need me. So I think, I think communication in between the coaching call with the coach is the most important, valuable asset that they can get. I agree. I 100% agree, man. I, I, and, and uh, yeah, I love it. And look, even for my guys, right? Like if I, I have people where I'm like, Hey, listen, what you got to do is <clears throat> you need to send me a picture of your every day. I want to know that you're getting out in your field. And the way to do that is, you know, this particular guy like Starbucks. I said, you need to send me a, a, a photo of your Starbucks thing. Right. And, and look, and it takes yeah. time out of my day to like go, Hey, that's, you know, great attitude or great, you know, hustle or whatever. But <clears throat> I love that one. All right. Hey, listen, Shadi, I'm going to ask you a question and we're, I'm going to, we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. 
It's a question. If you've listened to the show, you know that I, I, I rarely ask this question, but I only ask it when I have somebody, you know, somebody interesting like you. And I and I and I and I maybe I've not done a good enough job capturing the stuff they want to say. So here's a question. That was, that was way too long. It was set up. So is there something that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you? Ah, very good question. Now you really got me thinking. <laughs> uh, is there anything that you should have asked me that you did not ask me? Um, what did I miss? It's a very good question. You got me thinking. A very, uh, I'm almost never ever at a loss for words, uh, but uh, I can think very quickly. I took my vitamins today. <laughs> so I would say, uh, I would say maybe about my morning ritual. Okay. How do I set up my day? Well, yeah, good, perfect. Like, how do you stay productive? Right, because because I mean that's okay. something I think people struggle with. Right, is like they're you know they always think there's not enough time in the day. There is. You're just way too inefficient. But yeah, how do exactly. you stay productive? Okay, well, number one, I wake up super early each and every single morning. Okay, and I do the same exact ritual every single morning. This is the most important important part of my day, no matter what. No ands, no ifs, no buts. This is non negotiable. This is the only thing in my schedule that's non negotiable. Is my morning routine. I wake up each and every single morning. The first thing I do is I go and this. Because when you do that, don't we do that. Do that right now. Give yourself a clap. It moves the blood. Do you feel the tingles in your hands? Yeah. Perfect. So I begin by doing that. And then after that, I just thank God for another day where I have an opportunity to impact someone and help someone. So I give thanks. After I give thanks, I do my affirmations in my mind. Okay? I do... Uh, and not, not, not in this order, but I do reading every single morning, a minimum of 15 minutes every single morning. I write out in my journal the things that we talked about earlier, you know, three things I am uh, that made me happy in the last 24 hours, three things I'm grateful for, my top three goals, and my income goal 25 times. And then told me what I do is I do a little bit of exercise each and every single morning. It may look different for every single person. Sometimes I just do about 10, 15 minutes just to get the blood uh, moving, uh, to get me going, and then I pray. And after I pray, I do my visualization, you know, along with my vision. That's it. Got it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. I need, I, get, I need to be way better at that, man. I get up and my, my, look, I'm up early. I'm up like at four 30 every morning. And sometimes I'm like, you know, uh, honestly, I'm like, I just don't feel like going into work. You know what I'll do is I will literally like turn on like a Netflix movie and I'll blow like yeah. an hour and a half. And, and I know that's not productive, but but I'm like, I just need something light to warm up. All right. Hey, so we're going to wrap this up, Shadi. Hey, awesome interview so far. Uh, I'm a aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy? You, you read one book a week. So I'm just going to have to ask you for one, maybe two. But okay. which is like, uh, what can you suggest? Okay. The number one book I recommend, and, and, you know, this is like a common thread. Like, you know, I'm interviewing a bunch of people from my podcast right now. And, uh, you know, I always ask them the same question. What is one book that you would recommend to anyone out there? And the common theme is always the magic of believing. The, the magic, magic of believing. I don't, th- I, listen, I, that's amazing. Of, who wrote that? I, I, that, Cla- you, I think Claude you're the first. Claude Bristol. Claude me. Bristol. Let me tell you what I love about it. Yeah. It's a very short book, easy book to read. And, you, you know, like literally 100% of my clients tell you that book like totally changed their life. If someone read the book and says it didn't do anything for them, we'll tell them to read it again because they read it wrong. Well, I'm going to go get that. I think that is the first time anybody has recommended that book on this show. So um, if anybody yeah. wants that, I'm sure that's on Audible. You can get a free copy, audibletrial.com slash Live. <clears throat> hey, Shadi. Thanks so much for taking the time out. I know you, you, you got a ton of stuff going on all the time, but maybe tell everybody where they can find you and we'll sign off. Sure, no problem. Uh, best way to reach me would be on shaddybazzy.com, which is C-H-A-B-I-B-A-Z-Z-I.com. And or they can go to R-E-S-M-Podcast.com, which stands for Real Estate Success Mastery TV. And that's uh, you know in iTunes, et cetera. Dude, next time we have you on, we should just this audio was not that great. We should have had you on Skype. I totally forgot you did a podcast. So uh, maybe, yeah, no maybe, problem next time. Yeah, maybe we'll have you on again. and We'll talk about uh, about mindset or something. Hey, Shadi, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, go get him and let's let's stay in touch, man. You're you're a guy that you got uh, it, buddy. We're doing a lot of similar stuff, so I want to stay. I want to stay it. closer. All right, bud. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.
Later. Let's go. Yeah. For those of you that want to know what we're all about, it's like this, yo. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power. 